Hello, and welcome to Get Yourself Published, Promote Your Research, a webinar series from the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Committee at the George Washington University. In this eight-part series, we explore tools, resources, and tips that can help you get your research published and ensure that it is widely read and cited. In our videos, we cover topics ranging from how to spot a predatory publisher to using COVID and software for a systematic review. Our webinars are publicly available and licensed under a CC BY NC SA Creative Commons license, although some resources discussed in this series are only available to faculty, staff, and students with access to Himmelfarb Library resources. My name is Tom Harrod, and I'm the Research Support Librarian at the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. Today's session is called COVID and Training. My email address is tph at gwu.edu. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about the material covered in this presentation. Let's get started. Here is an outline of the topics that will be covered in this session. First, we'll look at the basics of doing a systematic review. After that, we'll briefly discuss how to access Covidence and get an account, and then look at how Covidence can help streamline many of the steps required in performing a systematic review. Then there will be some conclusions. To begin with, let's look at the basic steps in performing a systematic review. I want to review these as we'll later on see how using Covidence can help streamline the performance of many of these steps. A systematic review begins with the creation of a research question, which then helps in the creation of an appropriate search strategy. When this search strategy is executed, the resulting list of citations will be collected and deduplicated. After that, a title abstract screen will be performed to weed out obviously inappropriate articles. Typically, some process will need to be in place to allow for input from multiple reviewers at this step. The input of all reviewers has to be tracked, and there needs to be a process to resolve potential disagreements. Next, the remaining articles will be collected and a full text screen will be done. Again, this step requires input from multiple reviewers with a process for resolving disagreements between reviewers. When the final articles are decided upon, they will go through a quality analysis or risk of bias assessment and data extraction process. Next, I'm going to show you how to get access to Covidence, but after that, we'll look at how Covidence can help you streamline many of these steps of a systematic review. Next, I'll show you how to get an unlimited free Covidence account through Himmelfarb Library's subscription to the program. To get access to the Himmelfarb Library's unlimited Covidence subscription, first start on the Himmelfarb website, himmelfarb.gwu.edu. Next, type Covidence into the Search Research Guides box located here. Then open the Covidence guide and scroll down to how do I sign up. Click on the Himmelfarb Library subscription link and create your account. It's important to create your Covidence account in this way as you will receive unlimited access to the software through our subscription. If you create a trial account, you will be limited in terms of the size of the reviews you can do as well as the number of reviews that you can do. Now that you have a Covidence account, let's take a look at how Covidence can streamline the systematic review process. In a moment, I'll switch over to my Covidence account and show you how it assists with the following steps. Uploading articles from PubMed and other article databases, deduplication of the articles from different sources, describing inclusion-exclusion criteria, performing a title abstract screen, full text screening, performing quality analysis of the articles, and extracting data. Here is the first page you see after logging into your Covidence account. From here, I can select Start a New Review. 
here I will name my review and make sure I indicate that I want to use the Himmelfarb library account. Let's now take a look at a practice review that I've already started. The first thing I need to do is upload citations, so for that I'm going to go out to PubMed. There is one major caveat with using PubMed. As of the creation of this webinar, it is only possible to import articles from PubMed to Covidence using the older version of PubMed. So I will go to the Himmelfarb Library website, go to PubMed, and specifically select the older version of PubMed for my search by clicking here. Keep in mind that this will likely change in the future, but for now, this is the best way to bring your citations from PubMed into Covidence. After I run my PubMed search, to move the results to Covidence, I will go through the following steps. Select my articles of interest. Here I will pick the first two results. Click on the Send to drop-down menu and select File. For format, select XML then click Create File. The file will download and you can save it to your desktop. Now, back in Covidence, press Import and select where in the review process you want these citations added. Since I want these citations to go through the full vetting process, I will pick Screen. Next, select Choose File and then select the file from wherever you saved it. Depending on the size of the file, it may take a little while for it to upload into Covidence. As you can see here on the right side of the screen, Covidence will automatically deduplicate any repeated records. This is especially helpful if you're bringing in citations from different article databases, as there is typically a good deal of overlap between sets of articles brought in from different databases when applying similar search strategies to those databases. Back on the review summary screen of my practice review, the next thing I want to do is to input my inclusion exclusion criteria. To do that, I will go to settings, and then select Criteria and Exclusion Reasons. On the following page, I can enter my inclusion and exclusion criteria. Doing this will be important later on, as I can refer back to this criteria at the various stages of the review process. In Covidence, you can assign multiple reviewers to the various stages even reviewers from other institutions, as long as the person who created the project is from GW. To add reviewers, I'm going to go back to Settings and click on Add Remove Reviewers. And here you can invite another reviewer. Once you've added reviewers, you can now indicate the number of reviewers required at each stage by clicking Review Settings. If you choose more than one reviewer for a stage, Covidence will compile the replies for each article from all reviewers. If there is disagreement about a particular article's inclusion in the study at either of the screening stages, then you will be given a list of the disputed articles. Click here where it says Resolve Conflicts, 
and you'll be prompted to resolve the issue and make a final decision. This can be done by a third party or by whatever process your team decides on to resolve such disputes. The next stage is the full text screening. This means reading the full text of the articles that made it through the title abstract screening. This is performed as described above for the title abstract screening. Multiple reviewers vote and the disputed articles need to be mediated in some way. Here you can see where you can upload the PDF of each article to facilitate full text screening within the Covident software. The next stage is the quality assessment and data extraction. For each of the articles that have made it through the two stages of screening, you are prompted to do a quality assessment and data extraction. Covidence def defaults to the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool for quality assessment. However, you can edit the domains if you like here. For data extraction, Covidence defaults to the following fields. These can be altered as well. For more information on personalizing the quality assessment and data extraction portions of your Covidence review, please see the training videos linked to the Covidence guide referred to before. On this guide, we've linked many of the company-supplied training videos. Again, to access the Covidence guide created by Himmelfarb, start at the Himmelfarb homepage, himmelfarb.gwu.edu, from there, type Covidence into the Search Research Guides box. Next, select the Covidence Guide and select the appropriate tab for further training materials. So through the prior demonstrations, you can see how Covidence helps streamline the process of performing systematic reviews at the various steps in the process. This includes uploading articles from PubMed and other databases, automatic deduplication of those articles, indicating inclusion-exclusion criteria, performing title abstract screening, performing full text screening, and finally quality analysis of the articles and data extraction. In conclusion, systematic reviews are very long and complicated projects that require a good deal of accurate record keeping at every stage. We've seen how Covidence can help to streamline that process and make the record keeping far easier. Since doing a systematic review is a team sport, we've seen how easy it is to invite fellow researchers to participate on Covidence, even people from other institutions, as long as the person creating the project is from GW. This concludes our session for today. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Covidence training, a part of the Get Yourself Published, Promote Your Research webinar series from the Himmelfarb Library at the George Washington University. Also, if you have time and are able to complete our exit survey, we'd appreciate your feedback. If you have any questions about the content covered in this session, please don't hesitate to email me at tph at gwu.edu. On behalf of the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Team, thank you for listening.